Uh, okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mor. I'm a PhD student at uh, Tel Aviv University and a clinical psychology resident. And I was invited here today in order to tell you a little bit about using machine learning uh, in psychotherapy research. Uh, these are uh, some of the wonderful people working with me uh, on this amazing uh, project. Um, so I'm going to start with a very basic question, for me at least. Uh, who believes that psychotherapy actually works, that going to a psychologist helps? Okay, this is a little better than I expected. Uh, but for those of you who didn't raise your hands, uh, I think you kind of have a solid point because for me as a researcher uh, and as a psychologist, I can tell you I deal with this uh, very question myself every day and we don't have a clear answer yet. Uh, so I'm going to spend the next nine minutes um, telling you why this is a very complicated question uh, and what can you do in order to fix it. So uh, in uh, psychotherapy, just like in other medical fields, uh, we have to show that a certain procedure has actually led to a good outcome. Um, and um, in our case, that paying 400 shekels to your lovely psychologist every week uh, is actually working, promoting your health. Um, the problem is that unlike biology, we don't have uh, blood tests or uh, microscopes. Uh, and this is a problem uh, because we have a really, uh, it's really hard time to measure it. Uh, it also requires uh, dealing with natural language, which we all hate because this is probably the most complicated thing on earth, especially for us. Uh, and this is why um, currently uh, most psychotherapy research is actually based on going to people and asking them how they felt after the session, which let's be honest, it's not very scientific. Um, so one day we had a thought, um, maybe we can use this complexity in our favor instead of fighting it. Um, and this is why we have invented the metrics uh, the metrics is a content analysis scheme for psychotherapy sessions. Uh, it transforms session transcripts, everything being said during those 50 minutes, uh, into sequences of code uh, using an algorithmic and objective menu. Um, every sentence uh, during the session gets a three-letter code uh, that gives you 150 codes per session. Uh, and if you take hundreds of sessions from different patients, uh, you get what we can call big data. And this is a place where complexity is kind, um, kind of a blessing. So uh, this is the matrix um, with a flaw. Um, it's a very basic table with two axes, but I'm going to show you that everything uh, being said during a therapeutic session can actually be classified within these nine boxes. So uh, the first axis is called the focus. Uh, it is basically asking who is this sentence about. Uh, it could be either the uh, patient, the therapist, or uh, both of them. We call it a diet, it's a fancy word. Um, the um, second axis is called a mention. Uh, it is basically asking what is this uh, sentence about. Uh, and I like to think about it like music. Um, potential is like a musical scale. It tells you what notes could potentially exist within these scales in our case, experiences. This is not the actual experiences, but the ability to have them. And this is uh, probably the most common reason why people come to see me, because they want to experience more things. Uh, the second one is called content, which is the experience itself. It's like a single note, um, a memory, a dream, a feeling. And the third one uh, is called interrelation, which is like the melody. Uh, several notes placed one after the other, uh, creating a specific song, but not other. Um, in the human mind, it's like a conflict. And this is how it looks uh, in a real session. The patient and therapist uh, talk, and you can see how uh, these uh, um, sentences transform into very, very simple code. The first letter indicates the speaker, either the patient or the therapist. The second one is the uh, focus, who about, and the third one is the uh, dimension, what about. And at this point, we can uh, say goodbye to the uh, text and move into the world of machine learning. Um, so, um, what are we doing with this very fancy table? Um, if we zoom out for a moment, we see that the, the matrix is basically a restaurant much uh, larger process, aiming at uh, designing and managing better and effective treatments. Uh, in order to do that, 
uh, we first need to move from uh, session audio to text and then from metrics codes. Uh, right now we have actual human coders. Uh, one of them is sitting right over there. You can touch it. Um, uh, they, it, it takes uh, hours and hours uh, on each session. And this is why we are currently working on a platform, uh, developing a um, developing platform that will enable soon enough um, automated metric coding. If we are successful, that means that a computer can actually speak to human mind. We can actually uh, understand how we organize our mental experiences. Uh, the second of the arm of the project is heavily based on machine learning. Uh, basically, we want to ask, can we predict uh, the model, the ideal session, can we predict the outcome of an entire treatment based on a single session on its codes alone? And lucky for us, we have a close collaboration uh, with the lab of Ruth Salfati in the Open University. Uh, she brings us a cutting machine uh, learning methodology uh, that could uh, do some magic with our codes. And uh, I want to show you a little example of this kind of process that we do. Uh, last year, we gave the computer 2,000 metrics codes, kind of a small database, um, and uh, it was taken from good and poor outcome treatments. Uh, and we asked the computer, what can you tell us about these uh, sessions? Uh, we believe that all good sessions must have something in common. Uh, they unique fingerprint. And one way of approaching it was to use a finite state machine method, which is like asking what is the ideal sequence of code. Uh, given this very set of code, what is the most effective way uh, into a successful treatment? Um, and we figured that breaking in code, this, um, as you can see right here, the letter change um, must have a meaning because it means that the patient and the therapist are not on the same page, they are not congruent. The patient he to uh, talks about one thing and his therapist about another. Uh, and that can, can be good. And indeed, we found that uh, the congruency ratio of the session, which is how many congruent moments were, as opposed to how many breaks, in code, uh, could actually differentiate in 100% between good and poor outcome treatments. Um, And as you can see, um, when, uh, when the congruence ratio was low, um, the uh, code were all, all over the place. Uh, the word from one box to another. Uh, on the other hand, when the congruence ratio was high, high, all codes were in the same box. And that's uh, not good either, also associated with poor outcome treatment. This is why, if we look at the ideal session, uh, we see that the uh, code is mostly congruent, but there's some occasional breaks. Uh, that means that we have a development in that treatment. Uh, and for us, this is kind of mind-blowing, because it means that if you give me a random session from any treatment, I can tell you uh, that a little bit uh, about the, uh, the option for you to succeed. Uh, and this, uh, I, I don't even need to know who the patient is, or who the therapist is, or what the symptoms are, uh, which is kind of awesome. And uh, here you can see that we wanted to check that um, it's not only associated with treatment outcome, but can also predict it. Um, and as you can see in four parameters, uh, um, you see that um, the model is fully classified the treatment outcome. And FYI, such findings potentially in the future uh, be worth billions of dollars uh, in the US alone because this is how much uh, failed psychotherapy costs every year. Um, and what can we do with all this information? Um, we want to help therapy uh, do the very complicated jobs. Uh, and this is our vision of what we call a clinical dashboard. It's a tool that allows a therapist to get an immediate analysis of the session, understand what happened, and can they do better in order to improve it uh, for the next one. Uh, users could uh, easily record the session and restore it. Um, we can also provide them uh, some information about the congruency ratio of the session, as we know now that it predicts a better outcome. Um, we can also point a uh, user to hotspots, um, moments during the session uh, where the code was broken and needed to be fully studied before the next one. And such insights, we hope, uh, could uh, possibly bring psychotherapy research into the 21st century. Thank you.